Surprise, surprise, surprise. Carnival Cruisers, exactly what I told you would happen, has now happened, as the cruise line is following in the footsteps of Royal Caribbean in easing more COVID restrictions on board their ships. And speaking of ships, Norwegian Cruise Line has just taken delivery of a beautiful new ship named the Prima. We'll tell you more about it. And Royal Caribbean Cruisers, there's news for you too. The ship you're booked on next year might not be the ship you end up cruising on. Let's roll the intro. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships Channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. And I have to say sorry for my stupid, cheesy grin, but if you caught my last episode just a day and a half ago, I said the following. What did I tell you? We were going to quickly, quickly, quickly get to the point where this pre-embarkation testing would be gone. And who knew that it would be within like five days of me making that prediction? Pretty darn cool, huh? And it seems like what we were expecting has happened a lot sooner than even I thought it would. I figured maybe like Monday, Carnival would begin making announcements about updates to their protocols. But surprise, surprise, it happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. And let's hear it straight from Carnival Cruise Line themselves. They say Carnival plans to make changes to pre-embarkation testing and COVID regulations aboard their cruises. And this is gonna happen in phases with the first update starting in just a few days, August 4th. This first update will focus on short cruises of five nights or less. And perhaps more importantly, more changes are to be expected to be announced shortly. So Carnival is, in my opinion, leaving the door open to a myriad of other protocol changes. And we're gonna to touch on that here in just a minute. But the big news right now is that effective for Carnival Cruises beginning August 4th here in the US, there are now new protocols around COVID testing. And for those of you who are fully vaccinated, and if you're sailing on a cruise, like I said, five nights or less, you don't have to test anymore for your Carnival Cruise for the most part. So group cruisers, if you're joining me on October 24th on Carnival Sunshine and you're fully vaxxed, you don't have to pre-cruise test anymore, which is pretty good news if you ask me. Now, if you're on a six night sailing or longer, you still have to do your pre-cruise test and that now has to happen three days or less prior to departure. Now, it's nice that Carnival is going back to the three day window as right now, it seems like for a lot of folks that I've heard at least lately, they're backed up on getting their COVID test results. I don't know if it's due to a surge in the virus, a surge in travel needs, or just a surge in needs for tests in general. Whatever's causing the delays here, the extra day now will provide peace of mind for people like you. And don't forget, you can still use the home test option through Abbott by Next Now or that new option that just came out, on point testing where you bring your own kit. One big thing to note that I haven't really heard much about here on the YouTubes is people talking about changes to the on site at the terminal testing for those of you who use it. It's going away for non-vaccinated cruisers starting August 4th. But as Carnival takes things away, they also give us things. And the give is actually pretty good. You no longer have to provide a PCR test as a non-vaccinated cruiser. A simple antigen test will suffice moving forward for Carnival Cruise Line, which is good because those PCR tests, they take a long time to get the results back and they cost a lot more money than a simple antigen test. So that's the big give and it should at least help a lot for those of you cruising with children or cruising yourselves without a COVID vaccine. If you have a cruise booked with Carnival, you probably got bombarded with emails late yesterday afternoon. I know I got emails for travel agency stuff and for cruises I have booked. I got a ton. I was like, what's going on? They're all about the changes coming down the pipe here in the next five days or so. Be warned, there are still itineraries that this new protocol change will not work for, even if they're five nights or less. And those are itineraries that include stops in Bermuda and Canada. And to go on those cruises, you still have to be fully vaccinated and you still have to take your PCR test 72 hours prior to sailing or your antigen test 48 hours prior to the cruise. And that's not a carnival cruise thing per se, that's a government thing. And by government, I mean government in the foreign destinations that the cruise lines are going to. Earlier, I mentioned that Carnival also left the door open for further changes to their protocols. And why don't we talk about that? 
Does that mean they're thinking of maybe dropping all the testing requirements in the near future, or maybe just dropping requirements for vaccinated cruisers, or maybe they're gonna change things up and allow no testing for cruises up to like 10 or 14 nights? Or could they even be thinking about fiddling with the vaccine requirements. As you know, a competitor named Royal Caribbean has recently stated that they intend to run their ships at a higher vaccination rate than we see here on land, which seems like a reasonable start to all of these changes in protocol. I know there's plenty of not vaccinated individuals out there who are itching to get back to cruising and it seems like most of these cruise lines are gonna start to become more accommodating and welcoming to those of you who don't have the vaccine, giving you a lot more notice, at least in advance, like about three months now for the most part, if you're gonna be able to make it on board these cruises. A lot of the cruise lines are changing the way they're doing the wavering process from a lottery system, just get lucky, to a first come first serve, which seems a little bit more fair for the non-vaccinated cruisers to get on board the ship. But whatever the process turns out to be, 10, 20, maybe even up to 30% of ship space will be allotted to non-vaccinated individuals. So whatever the future holds for Carnival or Royal Caribbean, the new protocols that we see here, I'm sure will be welcomed with open arms by many a Carnival cruiser. And speaking of welcoming things with open arms, have you checked out this shirt right up here? Home on a ship? you would be welcome with open arms on your next cruise if you showed up in that. If you'd like to check it out or any of my other cruise essentials, I take with me every time I cruise. The best way to support this channel also, by the way, is by gearing up with shirts like this or awesome cruise essentials. And you can find them in my Amazon affiliate store. There's a link in the description below. Thank you in advance for all your support. All right, Royal Caribbean folks, this next one is for you. If you have a cruise booked in Florida or Europe or Alaska or Australia, you might see a totally different ship listed on your itinerary than what you booked on. That's because Royal Caribbean is redeploying four ships because of speed regulations, they claim. And we're not talking like moving ships from Port Canaveral to Miami. No, we're talking about moving things across the globe. Now, these deployments we're talking about are in 2023 and 2024, and they affect four ships sailing in Alaska, Australia, Europe, and the Caribbean. So let's get into the meat of this matter here. The first swap we need to talk about is the Brilliance of the Seas. We'll be switching places with a smaller ship, the Enchantment of the Seas. Brilliance was supposed to be sailing in the Med May through November of next year, but Enchantment of the Seas will take over for her in that region. While the Brilliance of the Seas will instead move to Vancouver and offer Alaska cruises in 2023. Oh, and Australia, don't be alarmed. Brilliance of the Seas will be heading your way in the fall. And if all that's not complicated enough, there's another switcheroo, and it's between the Voyager of the Seas and the Adventure of the Seas. A similar flip-flop ship swap. I like that. Voyager of the Seas was meant to sail from Fort Lauderdale and Port Canaveral in the fall of next year, but Adventure of the Seas will now take over those cruises, while the Voyager will instead redeploy to Galveston, Texas in May of next year. This one's not gonna be a huge change because they're actually the same class of ship, so it's not gonna be as big of a disappointment as say you booked on the Brilliance of the Seas and you end up stepping on the tiny Enchantment of the Seas. Regardless, that's the ship swap flip-flop going on for Royal Caribbean. Was your cruise impacted by any of this? Let me know down in the comments below. Maybe now you have a ship that you're more interested in coming to a port near you. Hmm, maybe I do too. And speaking of a ship coming to a port near you, Norwegian's got a brand new baby. Not very small of a baby either. She's named the Prima and she's just been released to her new owner, Norwegian Cruise Line. And what a pretty ship she is. A ceremony took place for her in Finn Canterry Shipyard yesterday to hand over the first of six Prima class ships to Norwegian. The ship is destined to set sail in just over a month now on August 27th. And during her inaugural season, she's gonna be all over the place. Iceland, the Netherlands, Denmark, Southampton, all the way over to New York City. And it seems like Norwegian really wants to show this new ship off because she's gonna be moving around home ports very quickly. I already told you about all the European ports, but after her stay in New York, she's going to Miami, Port Canaveral, and Galveston, Texas, within like the first year of operations. So if any of those ports are convenient to you, or maybe they're your favorite port, well, there you go. You might have a chance to hop on board the Prima. It's a really cool ship and I'm really excited for that one. And there's another new ship I'm really excited for as well. 
Technically, she's already sailing, but it's still rather new. She's called Celebrity Beyond, and I just want to let you know, there's some news for this channel upcoming about Celebrity Beyond. So, thank you very much for stopping by the channel today, and until next time, we'll see ya on the midships. Oh, man, I'm back to using the teleprompter today, and uh, I got confused, and the text got so big and fast. Yeah, right behind me. Usually, I like to blow that thing up, but... Now you can see I'm shopping for shoes on Amazon and rain jackets. Huh, I'm going to Alaska. I wonder why. We'll see you tomorrow.